Adventures in Coding by Linda Lucas. Chapter 1. Meet Ruby. Ruby is a small girl with a huge imagination. She loves to crawl under her bed and imagine all the bugs that might live there. She's always coming up with new dance moves and her favourite word is why. In Ruby's world, she is the chief creator and architect. One day, she's a doctor. The next, a bug hunter. Her superpower? Ruby can build things with her imagination. Anything is possible if Ruby puts her mind to it. One thing Ruby doesn't like is to be told what to do. Sometimes this means trouble, especially if the instructions are unclear. When Ruby's dad asks her to get dressed for school, she puts on her dress and shoes, but keeps her polka dot pyjamas on. After all, dad didn't tell her to first change out of her pyjamas. When it's time to clean up her toys, Ruby puts her stuffed animals, building blocks and toy house away, but leaves her drawing pencils on the floor. Pencils aren't really toys, she says cheekily. Chapter 2. The Clues Ruby stomps and stumbles around her world while her dad is away working and travelling. Oh, how Ruby wishes she could go with him on his adventures. Working must be the best. But just when Ruby really starts missing her dad, she finds something unexpected. A postcard. Ruby's dad is always full of great surprises. Dear Ruby, today you're off on a grand adventure. I've hidden five gems for you to find. Keep going until you find them all. If you have more than one idea, follow the best one. And if you need help, remember that friends can often be found in unexpected places. I can't wait to hear how you found all the gems. Kisses, Dad. Ruby is excited. She wants to start her adventure and find the gems. But Dad hasn't left any instructions. How absent-minded of him. Where should I begin? How do I find the clues, she ponders. Ruby feels like she could lie down and cry. But Ruby is a very practical girl. And she knows that often big problems are just lots of little problems stuck together. And with those thoughts in mind, she knows what her first step should be. I'll make a plan. Having a plan makes Ruby feel stronger. First, she slides under the desk and looks for hints and finds four crumpled pieces of paper. For someone else, these papers might look like trash. Random numbers, words and statements. But for Ruby, they are clues. Like a secret code. Snow leopard lives on a mountain equals true. Penguins live in a house equals false. Step south two foxes from snow leopard a hundred times four. Address robot equals 16,000 amphitheater parkway. Greetings from the river. Chapter three Ruby's plan. The next thing Ruby needs is a map. Carefully she marks a spot for the penguins next to the riverbank and then she finds the address of the robots and draws their tiny house. On the mountain, Ruby carefully writes Snow Leopard and then figures out where the fox lives in the little garden below the Snow Leopard. But the map is far from complete. Ruby doesn't have any ideas where the fifth gem might be and she has so many questions. How do I find all the five gems? What happens if I get lost in the forest? How do I know what to bring with me? Ruby thinks long and hard. She decides that she'll just follow the shortest route from one place to another and marks the order of her visit. And she'll take a roll of rope with her. Rope always seems like a good idea. Maybe Dad left her help after all. Ruby rolls the map into a tight little bundle and sets out into the unknown. Chapter 4. The Penguins The first stop on the map is the home of the penguins. Now, there's one thing Ruby knows about penguins. They are very smart, but sometimes hard to understand. Ruby approaches the penguins 
and politely asks, Have you seen any gems my dad could have hidden here? Gem? A valuable stone that is cut and polished. The penguin named Tux says solemnly. Bang, splat, tick to cash. The penguin with the scarf chimes in. False. My dad lives in the North Pole. Concludes the chubbiest penguin. Ruby thinks about each of the answers. They almost sound like another language. She realised that she needs to be more specific when asking the penguins her question. She tries again. Is there something smaller than my first? Cut of rock or mineral? Of any colour and which is rarely seen here? True, yells the chubbiest penguin as he merely points towards the river. Oh, so the gem is in the river. Why don't we build a raft to try to get the gem out of the water, Ruby suggests. The penguins agree and quickly organise themselves into a complex mission. They gather some sticks and Ruby lends her rope. Each little penguin and Ruby does only one small task, but together they are powerful. And in no time the raft is ready and together they push it out into the water to find the sparkling gem. Chapter 5. Snow Leopard. Waving goodbye to the penguins, Ruby climbs to the next stop on her map, the top of the mountain. And who does she run into but the elegant Snow Leopard. Snow Leopard will surely be able to help her, but something is wrong. Why are you so upset? Ruby asks. I live up here because I love things that are simple and tidy. And now there's disorder, scoffs Snow Leopard. Look, it blinks. It's colourful and it hurts my eyes. Ruby glances in the direction Snow Leopard is pointing and sees a faint glimmer on the roof of Snow Leopard's home. It's a gem, Ruby cries out in delight. But Ruby is too small and the gem is too high for her to reach. Focus on the pure things, Snow Leopard stolically advises. Ignore the details that make things different. This will help you come up with a solution. Ruby takes a moment to clear her mind. She spots a bunch of sticks on the ground. Last time she made a raft with the penguins to get to the river. Maybe she can use sticks and rope to make other things. She, she builds a simple structure of rope and sticks, repeats it five times and soon has a ladder. Snow Leopard smiles in that special way only Snow Leopards know how to. And with the second glittering gem stowed away, Ruby thanks Snow Leopard and it asks, what is the best way to get to the garden? Chapter 6, The Garden. When Ruby arrives, the whole garden is in chaos. Everything is out of order with dirt, vegetables and foxes flying every which way. It's hard to focus on anything. The foxes are confused about what to do. They keep repeating tasks that are already done and missing other jobs that need to be completed. New rule, new rule, the boss fox yells. Everyone grabs a seed to plant and at the same time weed the garden. Ruby observes all the craziness and comes up with an idea. She raises her voice and gets everyone's attention. You, you and you, you're the planters. You need a bag of seeds. If the hole is empty... Drop in one carrot seed. If there's already a seed, move on. Keep going until you hit the end of the row, then move to the next row. Repeat the whole thing five times. Ruby is pleased with herself. Now on to the others. The rest of you, you are the weeders. Your role is to remove everything green and living, unless it's a carrot seedling. Check each row. Stop when you've reached the end of the fifth row. Oh, that helps, says the boss fox a little sheepishly. Everyone gets to work and just when it's time to plant the last carrot seed, Ruby spots something half buried in the mud. It's a sparkling pink gem. With three gems in her pocket, Ruby lets out an exhausted but happy sigh and that's when she smells something sweet drifting through the air. Her stomach starts to growl. Chapter 7. The Robots Not too far away in a very busy house with a very busy kitchen, the happy robots are baking. 
It smells like candy cane, cinnamon, cookies, milk, and jelly beans. A gem could easily be hidden in the messy kitchen, Ruby thinks. The robots love sharing everything, and they quickly invite Ruby in and teach her how to make cupcakes. Writing a recipe allows you to make many cupcakes. Once you've found a good recipe, you can make hundreds of cupcakes, or you can swap ingredients and make many different kinds of cupcakes, explains one of the robots. And recipes get better when you share them. You make friends when you share, continues the robot with the chef's hat. So Ruby makes cupcakes, lots of cupcakes, and when she's done, she picks one to take with her. I'll take the cupcake that has the red sprinkles, yellow frosting, and no strawberries, Ruby decides. Ruby takes a final peek around the shelves and into the oven, but is disappointed that she cannot find the gem. With the cupcake in her hand, Ruby thanks the robots and is on her way. When she takes a bite, she sees something inside the cupcake glimmering. Chapter 8, Chapter 8, Django. Ruby walks into the forest with her four gems in her backpack. Before she can get very far, a boy with a huge snake wrapped around his shoulders jumps out in front of her. Ruby spies the final gem in a chain around the boy's neck. Where did you get that gem? And what is that creature? Ruby asks. My name is Django and this is my pet python. Who are you? What are you doing in my forest? I am Ruby, and this is not your forest. It belongs to everybody, Ruby says fiercely. Ruby storms off without the gem, determined to get home and away from this boy. But when she reaches the river bank, it is too wide for her to cross. Ruby stops to think. Surely she can figure this out. You're doing it wrong, says Django, sneaking up behind her. Let me show you how. I know how to solve this myself, Ruby replies. Feeling very confident, Ruby decides to build a bridge with her trusty rope and some sticks from the forest. She hums a little to herself as she works. When the bridge is ready, Ruby drags it to the riverbank and tests it out. But it doesn't work. Chapter 9. The Problem Ruby is embarrassed. In her rush to build the bridge, she has forgotten to think about how to fasten it to the other side of the river. It's okay, Ruby. That was a great first try, Django assures her. We can figure this out together. Do you still have rope left? What if we use my rope to tie the bridge to Python and he can swim to the other side, Ruby suggests after thinking a while. Their plan works. Ruby is about to ask for the gem around Django's neck when all of a sudden the gem doesn't seem so important anymore. She already has four of them. The gems don't bake or ponder, dive or argue like friends do. Ruby smiles at Django, but doesn't say anything about the last gem. She is finally on her way back home. Chapter 10, Home. Back in her own bed, Ruby thinks about the long day. She is almost asleep when Dad walks in. Dad, I found all the gems. I made a plan. Ruby starts sleepily. It wasn't perfect, but that's okay. Because I got help from the curious penguins and we built a raft together. Then I met the lonely snow leopard who taught me to focus and make a ladder. And I helped the gardening foxes work better together and learn to bake the most delicious cupcakes with the robots. Even bossy Django helped me. They are also very, very different, but they all helped me on my adventure in some way. And they're all... Friends.